Hi everybody, good morning, afternoon, evening, as usual, wherever you are. I've been really cracking on with, the, with this journal. Haven't done anything in it that I haven't already shown you how to do. I've just, um, well, we'll have a quick look through it and see what you think. I'm not saying it's absolutely finished, but it's, it's certainly getting there. So on the inside of this cover, I've got my snippet roll. I've got one of the tags that you watched me make and I've got this little journal uh, which I really like and it's I've just put some pieces together there um, which are, I actually really like that it's it's cute so that lives in there then this page it's got some green spray on blah blah a bit of that goes in a butterfly so that's good journaling space there uh, that's the cottage, the house in which the people who wrote the book that this is all about, where they live. Good journaling here, beautiful decoupage on the music paper. Uh, then here is a pocket out of the book, which I made out of the book, put some lace along the top. And it's got one of the tags that you watched me make. This I haven't um, made in this showing you how to make this journal but if you look back over my videos you'll see there is a video on how to make this these envelopes they're pretty much the same as this whole technique you I, I coffee stained it first then I put gesso on then watercolor green and yellow then decoupage that that's it you know it's nothing more complex than that and that's got paper in for journaling So that just slides into there and a little tag in front of it. Like so. Uh, these two envelopes, which you definitely watched me do. They've got paper in now, so they're ready for journaling. And when you fold that back, um, all this is journaling space too. So that's okay. Now this is one of the ones we did last time where I folded the paper over um, this is just it's just a flip but it's got one of the envelopes on that we made uh, this one which is sewn up it's got paper in it now I stenciled up there just because I did um, and that folds over there and our little paper clip snippet goes on there which then provides us with a tuck spot so I made a journaling card I know you all know how to do that you just cut it out back it with coffee stained paper and I've sewn around mine because there's a fair bit of sewing in this but you don't have to sew around it so that's that nice page uh, that's the back of the envelope this is a side uh, pocket here with a little journaling card in all out of the book uh, and then this one here with this fold out and um, this glossy accent tag which I'm going to show you how to make today because Regina wants to know. Hi Donna! Hi Flo! Um, and then this is the centre spread with the two journaling tags that I made and this big roundel from the book stuck in down the middle and of course when we sew these signatures in that will be sewn down there as well so it will be fairly it'll be more solid than it is now although it's okay now. And here we've got a nice journaling page with a couple of little snippets, which I'm also going to show you how to do today. Was it Lynn? I think it might have been Lynn that said she couldn't get the hang of how to make snippets. So I'll just go over it quickly again today because it's a good skill to have. You know, those two little snippets there, they, they've really made this page. And here we've got the other side of the graph paper, which I folded over and stuck down, if you remember. And I've put one of our... Uh, tags in there and a journaling card in there from the book and down this space that is the folded over page I've just put a little bit um, of decoration from the book so here we've got another of our envelopes uh, on a, a snippet paper clip uh, and tucked into there is this beastie he's apparently a squat lobster he was in the book and the whole idea of this journal was to use the book and to include nature. So that's not just the pretty stuff. It's 
all of the stuff that was in the book. So that lobster was in the book. Uh, there's the the envelope there, uh, also sewn down one. Hi, Lynn. I'll be showing about the uh, these snippet cluster things uh, very shortly. I think it was you that wanted to know. So that's held in there by this uh, clip, which is also holding the envelope on. And then here I've just stuck this beautiful butterfly. I mean, I couldn't resist him. He was in the book and he's so gorgeous. And then this page. Oh, I love that. Decoupage, you saw me do that. This is out of the book as well. Um, I'm actually developing quite a thing for fungi and mushrooms and whatever. And I'm on the lookout, well, I say me, Mr. Fixit has been instructed to be on the lookout for fungi books and that, that sort of thing, because I, I really like them. And then this gorgeous little, I don't know, what is he, a hedgehog, maybe? Field mouse. Field mouse? Yeah. Little creature down there. Um, and then here, it's just a couple of bits put together, um, just to, it's, it's journaling space really. And I've got this envelope, folder envelope left over, which I may put somewhere, but I've lost my, oh, there it is. I was gonna say I've lost my snippet thing. So I'm just gonna hook that over there like that and put my snippet paper clip there. And that's that, that's signature one. Signature two, this is a, I know this is really quick and I'm going through it really quickly. If you've got any problems, you don't know how I've done anything or whatever, um, shout and I'll, I'll show you. So this is another one of these uh, foldy out pages. It's just a sheet of paper folded into three with a um, image from the book. The envelopes again. Uh, this is the folded over graph paper and it's got an envelope on it held with a tag. Um, this is glued down this time so I've got a pocket there and I've just put, isn't that gorgeous, um, a journaling card in there. Fold that over there and it gets attached with the paper clip snippet. And that's obviously the back of the envelope, which looks very nice. Here we've got the snippet roll that we made. Um, and in the pocket, there's one of our tags and another journal. Just to make sure there is plenty of journaling space in here. You know how to make journals. I know you do. I've shown you lots of times. Um, and here, that lovely pocket. I showed you that last time and said that I wanted to make a pocket out of it. And I think it complements this. Looks lovely. And a really big tag. So, journaling, journaling, journaling. <clears throat> then on here, another angled pocket. And this time I've just left the coffee stained paper as it is, but put a snippet up there. Um, so there's you can journal on there and on the back. And actually, I really like just that plainness of the uh, of the coffee stain paper on there. And then here we've got journaling space with a couple of little snippets, top and bottom. And this is the centre spread for this one. And this is a robin in the winter time. You know, he looks very wintry. So I've chosen two other images that are quite wintry. Uh, this is, says it's Japanese larch. I just stuck that on there. And this one is Sitka Spruce, Christmas tree in brackets, and December. So we're in the we're in winter all around with this centre spread. Sarah's joined us. Hi Sarah. Yay, I'm on. <laughs> you are well done. Nice to see you. Uh, and this it's another one of these um, fold out pages. And I've just put decoupage around here that matches this image from the book. Another one of those shiny tags, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I like that page, actually. It's just a bit different, uh, and I like it. And then here we've got the music sheet with a decoupage birdie, some some of our snippet roll, and a big journaling card in there. So there's lots of, I mean, you know, once you take that out, you can journal on there as well. There's lots of room to journal. Um, and then we've got a side pocket down here with a big 
journaling card in. I just stenciled behind there. So as when you take it out, it looks pretty and it really does look pretty, I think. So that's that. And then this is the other side of the graph paper that was folded over and it's a pocket, a little flip pocket. So I've just done what I did with the other one and just taken an image out of the book and stuck it on there. And this is a little card that goes in that side. It's just stenciled with a little image out of the book of a bird. Um, and this is a slightly longer, a wider journaling card. And it's um, just the sort of coastline of the island where these folks live. Another lovely diagonal pocket, lovely autumn colours really. And one of the tags that we made in there. Um, this is just a roundel. It, it was just on the page, so I've just cut it out to be round. I just like it, it's nice. And here we've got a tuck spot. And this, isn't that so beautiful? I love blue tits. And that's just a, a tuck spot, so it just tucks up into there. Um, and that's it. So that's a really quick flip through of the two uh, signatures. And you can see just how fat they've got. Uh, I'm not sure what they measure. But it's a bit, it's it's almost three inches actually. So that will tell us how wide our spine's got to be. And that's what we're going to be doing on, at the weekend, we're going to be making the cover for this and touching the signatures and whatever. It might take us the two days, the Saturday and the Sunday. Says hello. Hi, Shaz. Lynn says she's found the Tim Holtz bird decoupage. On Etsy, oh, it come in. yes. Oh, it's it's my passion in life at the minute. I really love that. I don't quite know what this image is doing out, but it's a lovely journaling card, isn't it? If it was cut to size. So that might go in there. But in any rate, we're pretty much finished. I might go through again, through the book again, see if there's anything I just can't live without being in here and uh, and add it. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is Regina. Oh, no. No. She mustn't be very well today. Um, but anyway, I promised I'd show how to make these glossy tags. So the first thing I need to do is actually the first part of it, which is just adding some decoupage to the tag. I'm just going to get my glass board out because I don't really want to get... My cutting that stuck up. Carol says absolutely beautiful signatures. Oh, thank you, Carol. Carol Beading. Oh, hello, Carol. I don't recognise your name. How nice of you to join us. Thank you. I th think that journal isn't quite my style. I'm much more about, you know, the being precise and um, sewing, you know, around the edges, etc. But, you know, it was a 101 journal. Uh, so as everybody could kind of get the hang of what we were doing. Uh, and and I, I think we've achieved that. So I'm just going to tear a little bit out of this uh, napkin. We've used this in the journal before, so it's the right thing to use, I think. They're just shop-bought swing tags, aren't they? Yeah, they're just shop-bought swing tags. They come with a pile of... Um, string that you can put through them i prefer to use my own but they do come with the string and think uh, thinking about it i think i bought them from our post office but i guess poundland or somewhere like that would probably also do them so i'm just going to use a little bit of um decoupage gel glue just decoupage this on and i'm going to have to wait for it to dry which is why i'm doing it at this stage and I'll put it to one side we'll come back to it later you all know how to decoupage so it's nothing nothing sinister going on here all clever so there we are I think that's stuck on it's just a little job but actually if you do you know when you're doing them if you do say I don't know 10 together and pop them in an envelope your next project you'll have some done and dusted and ready to go I need to lift that and put it somewhere to dry right. 
thank you. Uh, so the next thing that I was going to do was the snippets. Um, right, so what I've got in front of me is some lace bits, um, a random button, the selvage of some silk, but any fabric would do. I've also got some sari silk in green. I've got some of this gauze that um, was a bandage, if you remember. I don't know, I don't know where I've put the whole bandage, but it was just a bandage from the pharmacy. Um, and it says gauze bandage, and when you open it up, you just get blinking loads of it. This is a small fraction of it. Um, and we dyed that with uh, avocado. What, what you do, I mean, there's loads of videos out there on how, how to do it, but basically you, you keep the stone or the pit and the skin and you boil them up. The longer you boil them, the more intense the colour. And then when you're happy that it's a colour you want, you just dip your gauze in and out it comes. I've also got some of this beautiful lace that Regina sent me from America, which is beautiful truly gorgeous lace um i've got this lace as well cotton lace and i've got some of this really really cheap lace uh, very nylony very cheap but can come in useful Pat says hi. hi Pat. um the other things that i've got are these which are postage stamps and I bought these off at, uh, eBay, actually. There's loads and loads of them, and they really were not expensive. So that's, that's them. I'm sure I've got enough out there. And, you, you know, they come in different colours. Obviously, different prices are different colours. So if you're doing a blue journal, there's blue stamps. Um, you know, whatever. But I would recommend buying some of those. They're really cheap. Used stamps. Search for used stamps. And then in here I've got some bits that I've fussy cut. This is a bit depleted now, but sometimes I just take it in my head when I'm sitting watching the telly at night to just get a page out of a book and fussy cut it. Um, and so you end up... I've got lots of leaves. I've got this gigantic robin. That's going to be a big snippet. Uh, lots of leaves in this one, actually. Uh, and then some butterflies. These, I think, were a freebie on Artie May's Facebook group. So there's lots and lots of butterflies there. Um, more butterflies, more leaves. Yeah, that's pretty much what's there. So for a botanical or a nature journal, this is fine. If you're doing something else, you, you're going to have to find some some other sort of topper type thing. Right. So first thing to do is you need to get yourself a piece of thickish paper or card or something to build it on. Regina says morning. Morning, Regina. Late to the party. Hope you're feeling all right. Yeah, I hope you're feeling all right. So I'm just going to cut a piece of card. It doesn't have to be very big. Really, the size of your card will determine the size of your cluster. So there we are. And the first thing I'm... Oh, I also want some text. Mm, is there a dictionary or anything like that around? Yeah. Please. Yeah, text is, is good. Hope you're feeling all right today, Regina. Been thinking about you. Thank you. This is uh, the Concise Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> and I also have, I think I've got another book up here. Uh, this is a Kathy Reich's book, so it's about murders and stuff. So if you're going to use it, just make sure that it hasn't got anything too awful in it. I'd say that about any book, even the dictionary. You know, try and make sure that you're not you know, on the bit that says, I don't know, penis or something, you know, you, you just don't want that. Well, I don't want that in my, um, in my journal. <laughs> I now made myself laugh. 
any word, any rude word. Right, so let's have a look then. What have we got here? Bread, you can't surely go wrong with that, can you? I don't think so. The reason that I'm doing this today on a Tuesday, which is not the day I normally do weekly lives, is that the car boot sales are starting up tomorrow and uh, quite a large one uh, close to us is on tomorrow and it starts around midday -ish. It's quite a ways away. So um, Mr. F's off to that. See what delights he can find for us. Um, and he won't be back in time to uh, to man chat or set, set up the studio or anything. So uh, we're doing it today and then he's free to do what he wants to do tomorrow. What have I just done with my bits of card? Here they are. So kind of the first thing is just to tear some some text out randomly might as well do two together actually this is another thing see if you can get yourself a sort of um, production line going it's much faster when you've got all the stuff out and you're in a mess anyway because you've got loads of bits um, you might as well try and do a couple, you know, 10, 12 or something together. Right, so they can go on there like that. Then I'm going to put a bit of lace. Regina's lace is too nice. Oh, yes, I've got this, this snippety stuff here. Um, I'm just going to build it first and make sure that it looks all right before I go back and glue everything. So, yeah, I've got this really nice lace here so that's all I've got left of it so I'm just going to cut that in half and put that down there hanging off the bottom same there I'm going to end up with two pretty similar here I think um, right and then I, I would quite like some of this text Let's just check that there's nothing nasty. No, I think we're okay. So that's perhaps a bit big. And tear that down to there. And this one. Yeah, I don't think we need all of that. There we are. And then next I'm going to put some fabric on and I'm going to use this because it's really, really pretty. Um, I don't need very much. But I'm just setting the tone that this is a, you know, going on a green page. I can go there. And um, I might put that behind everything actually on this one. And just have that peeping out there that's quite nice so then you're sort of into the top kind of layers really so I'm going to use I think I'm going to use an orange stamp just so it stands out I'm just going to tuck that behind that bit of fabric there so it's just tucking it you know it's just peeping out um, and I'm going to put a no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, a, a pink one. Yeah, how about that? So in front of the fabric and behind the, the text. So it's it's there, but it's somewhat hidden. And then I'm going to look at my whatever I've got left for toppers. Um, I mean, buttons always work well. This is a bit of a big chunky monkey, but they always look nice. Uh, that's a bit big. Let's have a look see what my mum had in her uh, in a button box see if I can find anything more suitable that's quite a nice little button not convinced it goes with that pink that's the problem um, oh, here's a pink blimey that looks a bit grubby 
don't know why she kept that one. Um, I know. Is there a bright blue stamp? Oi, hello. This one here. Let's put that in in here. Like that. Let's tuck it behind the, the top text and over the bottom text. Like so. And then this button will match there. So that's quite nice. Uh, on here I'm going to do something different because I'm going to add a butterfly or something along those lines. Helen says hi. Who does? Helen. Adams. Helen. Hi Helen. She's been rearranging a craft room for the hundredth time. Oh, I was just going to say for the hundredth time. Honestly, I can't. It doesn't matter when I do it, how I do it or whatever. It's just a mess. Because things like this, you've got to have so much stuff out. It's ridiculous. Oh, there's a nice little acorn there, look. That might go quite nicely there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't see anything wrong with those, really. That lace probably needs to go up a little bit. But overall, I think they're fine. If you... If you want to bling things up, which, you know, sometimes we do make journals that we want uh, blinged up a little bit. You can add your butterfly and then get your bling and just pop it down the centre there. So that's about two of those long. So just glue that on there and you get more dimension, more bling, and just a bit more interest. Okay? So, now I've got to remember where they were and glue them down. <laughs> uh, well, firstly, I've got to find my glue. Here we go. So this is three in one, but I would recommend if you can get Fabri-Tec, use Fabri-Tec because we're gluing fabric down. So let's move these and hope we can get them back in some sort of, in the order that they were. I can use... Aileen's for this one. The other thing that you can do is you can ink around them and that Well, it'll either work in your favor or it won't Sometimes they just look a bit grungy, but that might be what you're going for um, Where's my Sponge my booby sponge. I didn't know Okay, fair enough. I can't find the one I wanted so I'll use this one Yeah, I moved on. <laughs> so I'm just going to gently ink around this. And this is this lovely olive colour. If you remember, I've used it uh, in our journal. And it's lovely. This olivey chartreuse colour is probably my favourite colour in the world. I love it. Actually, blue glue will do that job nicely for us. Uh, let's use this book as a glue book. Another new glue stick today, guys. I'd just like to say a huge thank you to the people that have donated to our page. It really makes an enormous difference. I mean, a lot of the things that I do, I end up giving away. Um, and it's expensive, so... I mean, some, some are sell, of course, and the, the money can go back into the making of things. But uh, I, I really appreciate everybody who's donated. Thank you so very much. So this needs to get glued on. And I'm using my three-in-one for that. Um, Pat would like to know where you get the sorry silk from. Uh, I get it from a shop on Etsy. And it's called, could you have a look at that bag that's got a sari silk in? I think it's still got a name on. Sue's something? Sue's Country Creations. Can you write that down? I can show it on the camera probably. She's ever so speedy sending things. Um, 
and you get you know if you go for a mixed mixed lot you get loads which is nice so I'll just ink around here as well so I'm just building up as I go the idea is to be random or at least so it looks like you've been random put that on there but did we have we had something tucked in behind that didn't we did we have the stamp if you're like me and you can't remember a thing that you're doing um take a photograph with your phone so you know what it is that you're aiming for well i don't know if that's what we had but it looks nice so we'll go with that and I need to use this glue on it. Try not to use that glue anywhere where it's going to be seen because it comes through and it looks very unsightly. Double, use double sided or a snail or something like that if you've got it. Um, so that goes there. So I'm going to tuck that in behind there as well. Put the tail and bottom of the stamp and up a bit above and below. Just I've got my butterfly sort of coming out over the side. You mean? Well, where it was going to be, but yeah, like, like that. Yes. Oh, lovely. That's it. Get it layered. Yeah, I need to stick this this fella down. Yeah, layering randomness all it's about so that's a good idea there from mr f very good told the bottom of the stamp so we've got half behind and half in front man's a genius he's nothing short of a genius um and then this which i'm also going to ink around because it's a bit um blah. so i don't know if i'm helping you anyway to um, build your snippets but this is how I do it so that's going to go on there over the stump over the text but allow us to see everything that's gone on so let's stick that on kind of there I think at an angle angles please me more and then just a bit of glue down there. Stick these two little blingy bits on. See, this wouldn't suit the book that we're doing at the minute because there's no bling whatsoever in our book journal, should I say. Right. <laughs> just stick, please. I'll leave that alone for a minute. It still needs the gauze behind it, but now we can see the shape of it. We know what, how much gauze to add. So I'll just leave that there to come to its senses for a while and dry. So let's see what I've got. Well, it's pretty similar, isn't it? Except it's blue. Um, I'm just going to stick my glue gun on for a minute. Just so I can stick that button on because I find glue guns are about the best thing for sticking buttons on. So it's kind of the same process, really. Um, I'm using this dictionary page. It's very thin, so it's not going to stand up on its own. So it needs the support of the uh, card at the back. Lynn says she's made fabric slip it rolls before, but not many paper ones. Yeah, fa fabric ones are lovely. Um, I don't think I've got any around at the minute. Mm -hmm. Natalie. Says hi. Hi, Natalie. Thanks for joining. Nellan says uh, your demonstrations are very helpful for you, and I thank you. Oh, that's good to know. Good that I'm not just <laughs> sitting here waffling away to myself. Um, so I'm adding this lace, and I want it to be seen. You know, it's really nice lace, so I don't want to hide all of it. But I'm going to have to put some in the snippet itself. So I'm just putting a bit of glue down. But you can see, I think, the benefit of if you were making sort of 10, 12, 20 or whatever at one time, you've got everything out. I mean, my 
my toppers, my butterflies and stuff, they're, they're a bit depleted at the minute. I need to do some fussy cutting. Pat says she never knows where to use snippets. Well, really. Anywhere? Yeah, anywhere. You know, if you've got a page that you're going to leave for journaling, so it's going to be fairly empty, really, put a snippet up on the top corner, bottom corner or whatever, and it just raises it. It's just like, oh, she left that with nothing on it. No, you didn't. You put a snippet there and it just, it's a bit of interest. So what was I doing with this then? Who knows? Put that at an angle. I'm going to put my stamp in there. Should have taken a photograph. Yeah, this is completely opposite to how I had it before. It doesn't matter, that's all right. Right, I've got this text at an angle and I don't like it at an angle. So I'm just going to... I just find it irritating, that's all. But if you're all right with it at an angle, no reason why you shouldn't be. Right, so I've torn it out so it's that shape now. So it can go there. I've got a little bit of a gap here. You can still see the card. If I do that, that's all right, but I'm still going to have a gap there. So I need something else, basically, is what I'm saying. I need something else. You could cut the corner off the stamp that's going underneath and put that up there. Up here? Yeah, the, the part of the stamp that's underneath yeah. isn't serving any purpose, so you could cut it off and use it elsewhere. Mm. You had that underneath a minute ago. Yeah, no, I'm just about to put it underneath again. I know. No, I don't want to cut a bit off that. It looks it look silly. Well, you won't see it, will you? Talking about cutting off the bit that you can't see. Yeah, and using it, but I don't want to use that bottom bit. It'll look silly. I think it's coming out of somewhere. Um, okay. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it to my say so. <laughs> right, so I've got that there, part of a stamp. And, I don't know, is it coming out there? No, I'm talking out underneath that green at the top, the bit that you had there. But it's upside down. It doesn't matter. Oh, it does to me. <laughs> I'd as soon use a new stamp. <laughs> oh, no, I can't be doing with that. Your That's, OCD-ness is yeah, kicking it's, in. it's too much for me to bear. <laughs> too much. I'm going to stick this green on. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't have lived with that. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? Right, so this is going on there. So this stamp can go there. Nice. Yeah, I like that. It's going to have to be on a bit of an angle because there's only half a stamp now. Um, but I really sort of want something in there. And I haven't got anything that's going to do that. I could just be done and put that there. No, we need another stamp, guys. We need another stamp. So how about... Well, does this one? That's also blue. Which would go nicely with our with that. I need some more lace. Need some lace. That's what's needed. A bit of lace. Let's take that off. Put that along there. That there, that there. This at an angle. Need something under there, otherwise you can't see that bit of lace. So a bit of the dictionary, perhaps. D 
doing junk journals is is like agonizing, isn't it? You agonize over every blinking decision that you make, or is that just me? Right, so I'm going to stick that there. Yeah, that's that's fine. Put that lace on top. Put this over there. Yeah, we're getting together now. It's coming together. And my button. Yeah, that's it. Finally, finally got there. Um, I should tell everybody, uh, and just in case you don't know, that we have a Facebook group that sort of goes alongside this um, channel, YouTube channel. And it's called Junk Journal Group. So you can remember that on Facebook. You're very welcome to join. We're a really nice, friendly group. I don't know if I can ink this. Can I ink this lace? Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, lovely. That's nice, isn't it? Blight me. That's what was required. I need green stamps now. No, I'm not. Right, so that wants to get stuck on there. Um, yeah, the Facebook group. And there's lots of people who are very, very good at journal making. Lots of people who are new to journal making. We're all in there together. We're all there to help if we can. Uh, and we support each other, which is really nice. And... Is that the bit I was using? No, this bit. Thought it'd gone on a funny angle again. Right, so I can stick that down. So if you'd like to join us, just uh, pop over when this is finished, obviously, um, and ask to join the group. You'll be very, very welcome. Uh, we have a list for random acts of kindness. We have a list for birthdays, neither of which you have to join, but it's there if you want it. Right, so do I want that behind, don't I? Yeah. Just tuck that in there, over that other one. Just more layers. There we are. And then we'll put our uh, button on. And I'll show you in a second how to make these into paper clip. Uh, snippets right so I want my button there so I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue stick it on and there we are another snippet so that's nice let me just switch that off um, right now, if yeah, we need to add the goals behind them. That's the thing that I think makes a, a difference. It makes it look really, really nice and old and interesting. So I'm just going to cut a bit off here. Sarah says she's a newbie and only just started. She can't wait for the charity shops to open. Oh, neither can we. Never thought I'd miss them so much. So I've opened up the um, the gauze, and I, you can just I'm going to put glue on the back, and then you can just sort of wrinkle it as you um, as you apply it. So I'll show you what I mean instead of trying to describe it. So I'm going to put glue on the on the piece of card that we've built the whole thing on. And put your gauze on and, and wrinkle it up a little bit. Ruch it if you want to be posh. So that's that. But that it's too much, you know, that, that's that's too much gauze there. I want to see it, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. So you just chop off around it where you where you think looks good. Try you know, don't cut it off square. We're trying to be quite sort of random here. So just 
just like that. That's nice. And one layer is plenty. Uh, try not to have it folded if you can, because it looks too organised. For me, anyway. I mean, there's loads of different ways of doing it. But I like it just one layer. And then when you've got your coffee stained paper, it shows up against it. See? So that's uh, that done. I'll just give that a second to dry. And the same with the, with the other one. Just cut a bit off. And glue on the back. Everyone all right today? You may have just answered my post on the face group page. What did you ask part? So I'm just placing this on again over the edge, wrinkling it up just so it doesn't look too ordered on the front. It's quite difficult because your fingers want to stick to the glue more than the, the gauze does. Um, but that's fine, just wrinkled up like that. And just cut around it unevenly. It does sort of fray out this stuff as well, which is quite nice if that's what you're after. It's, it's brilliant stuff this. I mean it's it's a bandage. It's excellent. So if you hurt yourself whilst journaling you've got a bandage. So then I'm just going to fray that out a little bit. Put it onto my paper again show you that. So they look nice I think anyway. Like I say they just make a difference between a plain page and Somebody looking at it and thinking, yeah, she really cared. She took the time to go that extra mile. So if you want to make it into a paperclip snippet, then get your paper clips. The big flat ones are best, but these are the only ones I've got. Um, and they've got this, can you see that? This sort of lip on it there. It's, it's better if it doesn't have that, if they're just flat paper clips. But like I say, this is what I've got. So. so you get yourself another piece of card of similar size and dimensions to the first piece. And you can have this fancy if you want. You can make, um, you know, use uh, fancy paper, fancy card. Donna says the avocado made it a beautiful shade. Yeah, it did. It's lovely sort of, well, peachy, but, oh, it's gorgeous, I love it. And so, Lynn says she has ordered some sari silk. Yeah, that's that's good. I think a lot of people are having trouble getting the sari silk at the moment because India is in a really strict lockdown and people can't get st stuff from India out. But I've used that Sue lot on lots of occasions and she's been great. Right, so um, these are, that's the right side and the upside down, like that. So what you do is you take your bit of paper outside facing you, put your paper clip over the top, like that. On my particular case, I'm putting the bit with the lip facing out. And then you put some glue on it. Just make sure you've got it the right way. No, that should be that way. So I need my paper clip there. And then you just glue it. My glue is white, it's just it reacts with my the pin that I put in the top and it goes goes a weird rusty mucky colour. So that's that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lynn says that Sue's in the UK as well, so it doesn't take too long to get it. It takes, it's re, she is really quick. She's, it's wonderful, that's why I use her. 
so I'm just holding this because this is tacky glue just needs a second to tack up you could use double sided if you want there's no great pressure on it so you know it's fine pop a couple of pegs on if it needed it. yeah put some pegs around it or clothes pins if you're in America so that's that and it's got the safety the drawing oh, glory paper clip on the back so this is going to go there so that's where I want my paper clip just check that's right yep yeah. glue Fifty? Yeah. You're joking me. That's ridiculous. So I'll press that down and then I will show you what I use them for. Although you've seen it in the journal, I know. So I'll get to the uh, glossy accents. Blimey glossy accents on books. Yeah, well there's no rush. I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> Go and get yourself a snack. <laughs> right, so that's that stuck on there. And then really what I use them for uh, are the sort of envelopes and things that I took over the side. And just took that over, put in whatever you want, put that down, and there you go. You, you've now got a tuck spot as well if you want it. So that's that. It's all, also handy if you are... That wasn't glued yet... If you folded a page over uh, and you made a sort of flip and you want to hold it in place, just pop it on the top and it will hold it in place and look very pretty whilst doing it. So that they've got quite a few uses, these uh, snippet paper clips. Uh, and, you know, good to know how they how you make them and what you can use them for, I think. I'm not convinced that that's stuck, to be honest. I think it just needs a bit of... Uh, Mr. Fix its hand. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so I'm just going to pop these away like a good girl, tidy up, and then we'll go back to the oh glory, the decoupage tag because I want to show you uh, the glossy accents. Regina wanted to know how to do that, so we'll have a look and see. Do you like my fancy envelopes? <laughs> Pretty, aren't they? So these, this is my stamps. I keep them all in there. I wish I was as organised with everything as I am with this. But I'm not. Everywhere's a tip. Right. Oh. Lovely. So that's that lot put away. Right, so now we're moving on to making one of these. Um, here it is. So I don't think you were on first thing, Regina, but all I did was put some decoupage tissue onto uh, one of these tags. I just um, That one's been caught with some spray, but just ordinary uh, swing tags. People put prices on them and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to get some um, sandpaper and just go around there. Get rid of the excess. Tear the excess away. This has got a funny shaped top. You just take your time and work around it. Regina says she's going to watch it later when the meds have worn off. Oh, poor lass. And Donna says she puts bags of rice over the things to weigh them down. Yeah, good idea. There's nothing more. You're industrial. Show them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Mr. Fixit's homemade press. Just <laughs> <laughs> two, well, four pieces actually of that, of that with two heavy duty clamps on it, and nothing much argues with that. I can tell you. you so there we are. If you need a groove, you, see, you can put the paper clip in. Ah, yeah. The groove, so you're squeezing on the paper, you're not squashing the clip. Excellent. You're just too clever for your own good. So 
so there we are that's that sanded round nice and tidy uh, if I was doing this for myself I'd leave this for about 24 hours then I'd come over it with the fine sand paper I can try it now but let's hope it works just to get it nice and smooth makes a huge difference this um, running sandpaper over your decoupage yeah that's not too bad it's okay right so this stuff here glossy accents it's by ranger um they had a offer on on amazon whereby if you bought two of this size it was 10 pounds these are two fluid ounces I didn't know if I'd like it or not because I'd never used it, but you know, in for a penny and for a pound, I bought two bottles of it. And actually, I love it. I, I, I really like it. I think if you were um, doing a sign for the front of your journal, it just said journal or one of those bookmark sort of thing, excuse me, sort of things, putting this on it would really make a huge difference. Or numbers or stuff like that. But it is a kind of weird thing to use. It's like glue. In fact, I'm sure it is glue. And I'm just going to go around that hole that's in there and then trying not to take the nib off the page. Let's see if we can get a bit of zoom in, maybe. Go around, right around the edge. And it gets difficult where your finger is. So I'm going to have to leave that and just sort of dab it in so you, you're all around the edge. And then fill in the centrepiece. If you get an air bubble, which you do sometimes, just use a pin or the end of your scalpel or something to burst it. Um, and just make sure that you haven't got any deficits, that you've covered the whole thing. And this, you really do have to leave. When it feels like it's dry, don't be suckered into it. It's not. I thought that with mine and I wrecked them all because I turned them over. So I think that's everything. Oh no, there's a hole there. So yeah, if you catch it in the right light, you can just sort of see, make sure that you've got it all done. So that's that. Leave it well alone. For, as I say 24 hours and then it dries this really clear and very very shiny finish so let's have you got a bit of acetate or something there I don't know if this is going to work put it on the acetate first, probably. yeah I should have put it on the acetate first save moving it so that's it it's away for 24 hours and I'll show you on Saturday how it turned out does it look all right yeah yeah it may buckle yes it, it does it, it does you know buckle up as wet paper does but it dries flat so uh don't worry unduly about that excuse me while i just have a drink right so now i'm just going to show you some of the books that i use and i have accumulated for uh inspiration for using in journals etc um I'm sorry this is going on a bit. I, I don't realise everything was just going to take so long. So let's just get set for this. Oh. Here comes the first pile. <laughs> right. Let's just pop them across there a little bit. So this one here, um, a colour guide to familiar woodland and hill birds, pretty much as it says on the on the tin, pop really. Off, yeah, pop me off. And it has these gorgeous, gorgeous plates, really lovely. It's not shiny. It's quite quite an old book, so it's gone that lovely discoloured um, colour that old paper does. It's really nice very very usable for a journal really usable 
And don't forget, oh, look at that wood pigeon. We have those in our garden all the time. They are mating mad, can I tell you? Um, don't forget about copyright. Don't get caught out with copyright. Any of these books, unless they're pre-1923, are copyright and you cannot digitally copy them. You can use the actual physical thing, but don't think, oh, I want to keep that book intact. I'll just scan them in. Doesn't matter, even if it's just for yourself, don't do it. Um, you know, you'll get caught and you'll regret it. So this is this book. I mean, it's just, it's lovely, lovely book. If you're doing one on birds, that's what you need. Uh, this one, Wildflowers. Penny, with very much love, Diana. It is almost right. Oh, okay. wonder why it was wrong. So this has just got these smaller ones in that are really nice for little tags and stuff. Plenty of them. Plenty, plenty, plenty. And really nice. I've got white borders around them. You can cut them out square if you want to and add them to a tag. Very useful, handy little book to have around. I don't know if that says how much it costs. No. Um, this is a Collins Pocket Guide to Wildflowers. I mean, just look at it. Oh, thistles. I love thistles. Somebody was saying the other day they loved thistles. I do too. Actually, I'm Scottish and so it's our national flower. So perhaps that's why I like it. I don't know. Um, but lots of plates in here that you could just use as a journaling card, you know, without doing anything to at all. Um, daisies. I love daisies. Much maligned. I like them a lot. So there's loads in here that you could use load and if you like debbie uh debbie bankston an artist you can use this for inspiration and do your own watercolors uh, i know i've used actually this exact image for just that so yeah loads in there oh look at that page and <laughs> that's just such a gorgeous journaling card isn't it yeah okay so uh a year in the meadow book of days this was a pound For a start, there's these, there's that and that. Let's be having them out straight off. Oh, fungi, look at that. And it is, it's a kind of, um, it's not a kind of, it's a diary, but it does have these lovely images, fallen crab apples, lovely. Uh, some of them are in black and white, some of the plates are in color. I mean, if you're do, doing a Christmas journal, these are wonderful to uh to add in lovely really really nice that's pretty isn't it so there's lots in there you know for the pound that it cost <laughs> it's kind of worth it don't you think so yeah loads in there that's really nice to look at and to use uh this one wildflowers of field and woodland and I didn't say how much that was, but it it wouldn't have been much, I can tell you. We don't part with much. And once again, this has got lovely plates in, like this. They're all, you know, they're all there waiting to be turned into journaling cards and tags and, um, you know, stuck onto your page, maybe a whole page spread even. Oh, that's lovely. So what we like to go for in an ideal world is books like this where the plates have been painted. So it's not just a photographic um, image. It's an interpretation. And they look, I, I think they look nicer in your journal. More authentic with the, with the journal. So there's lots of nice ones in there. And Miranda Holmes says gorgeous books. Hi, Miranda. Yeah, no, aren't they? They, they really are. So yeah, I mean, oh, there was my thistle just passed us by. There we are. It just says, make me into a journaling tag. <laughs> That's what it says to me. So yeah, lots and lots and lots in there. Ah, 
and here we've got wildlife sketchbook forward forward by hrh the duke of edinburgh there you go so it must be must be good oh this is nice i can't remember this book oh yeah that's nice isn't it it's another one of these kind of diaries that someone's kept by the looks of it um little lapwing chicks we have those oh yeah out out the, out the back of our house is a bird uh, sanctuary and so we have lots of uh lots of all sorts of birds really that come over every year and uh these lapwings are there definitely they're quite noisy about it Oh, they're really nice. It's nice images in here. This one looks like he's been killed. That's not so nice. And uh, oh, if you're doing one, a sort of man's journal, a manly journal, as I think Shaz suggested some time ago, some nice images here for a manly journal. Yeah, lots of interesting things in there that you could, you know, even the black and white. Uh, ones you can color those in you can put watercolor over those I mean look at that That's, it's a lovely book that actually wow well, look at that red squirrel we have those here as well they're quite rare creatures red squirrels so yeah there's some nice images in there and not only that the the text is nice wow <laughs> Red squirrel sketches. The text, the font that's used, it's really nice. So you can use that as well. The concise British flora in colour. A pound. So yeah, I mean, look, it's obviously springtime with the daffodils and the snowdrops and the irises. Lovely. Oh, blimey, nature just gets it right every time, doesn't it? I mean, they're just beautiful. So there's some really nice um, plates in here that you could make nice sort of flips out of. Corner, uh, side pockets, etc. Lovely, really nice. So yeah, another nice book. And here, the floral, yes, yeah, this one here, which is called uh, the floral garden. It's a bit different, this one, in as much as they are sort of, they're like posh plates, really. You know, they are paintings, but they're, they're a picture. They're a picture in their own right. Well, they're designed to be torn out and framed up. Yeah exactly which is why it's got this cream around it here so you can put your frame around the cream and you've got a nice picture i don't think i would be framing up anything like that but um i do like them and they're very usable for a journal very i love those day lilies they're lovely so lots of nice 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 images Poppies and cornflowers, always popular. I mean, the likes of this one here, I can't see me ever using that in a journal. But if I was doing a journal that was about roses, which is not beyond the pale, because I've got every rose thing that my porch prince has ever produced, I could do a journal on roses, and that would make a nice addition to that, to that journal. So, you know, don't... Um, don't say, oh no, I never use them, because there might just be a day when you would. Very nice, very, very nice. Too nice to leave behind. So, this one, which is a bit of a tome. This was two ninety nine. so Mr Fixit's really pushed the boat out for this one. Wildflowers of the World, paintings, that's what we're looking for, paintings by Barbara Everard. Let's have a, oh look, 
It's this is lovely for me because I I honestly haven't seen these for quite some time. Look at that! It's beautiful. And these are large pages. It's not everywhere that you get large pages. You know, quite often they're the little hand book size. Um, really, really nice. If you can't get inspired by these books, there's no stir in you. That's all I can say. And this is the world, so it's not just the British flowers that we're used to with Edith, etc. We're going all over the world here, guys. So we've got cacti and stuff in it. There are some lovely plates in here. Ooh, it's a bit of a fun guy. Oh, that's one of those really smelly fruits. And durian, are they called? From Thailand. Really lovely. Really, really, really lovely. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love that. Anyway, there's loads. Look, goes on and on and on and on. Worth two ninety nine. Well done, Mr. F. Right, this one you've seen before. I've been nipping away little bits of it. Um, it it's a cracking book, this. I love it. it. Once again, the edition, the copy that I've got, it's quite old and it's, it's yellowing. The pages are, are yellowing, which is lovely, especially in a junk journal. So lots and lots and lots and lots of images. I've shown you that one before, Wildflowers, and it's by Spring Books London. And it's not expensive. I've seen it online. It's not really, really expensive. Uh, this one, Bird Life of Britain and Europe. I've had a little go at this already, just to get some bits to go on toppers for snippets. So I've, I've fussy cut some of those out already. But isn't this a lovely image? Blue tip with the, with the little fledglings. Uh, and you know, every, just about every page has got something. Oh, more for our manly journal. Um, just about every page has got something on that's worthy of cutting out. If you're doing a book on birds, a journal on birds, this is the book. They're not the paintings that we've been looking at previously. Uh, some of them are. They're, more, they're quite exact. They're quite botanical. But really nice. Lots of good stuff in there. Oh, look at that woodpecker. Yeah, so a lovely bird book, that one lovely if you're doing one on birds and i'm really really thinking that i might want to do one on birds because i've got that lovely collage paper the tim holtz collage paper <laughs> the aviary one right this is two pounds i've got two copies of this one i've already chopped up this is uh, a slightly less chopped up version this piece here this frontispiece can you imagine that just in a journal as a page beautiful in its own right um so yeah just page on page on page of images really good book fabulous book in fact uh we've already had a look at that one uh thorburn's birds very very famous collection of um Paintings, this Thorburn's Birds. This is two ninety nine. So the plates in here, they are sensational. That is beautiful. I mean, look at that. So yeah, you're quite right. I've got a thing about birds and I've got a thing about flowers, but I, I know that. So I'll just carry on playing to my loves. And that's, you know, that's why you'll see a lot more journals coming out that are birds and flowers. Thorburn's birds. Right, so this one, an Edwardian ladies flower album. Now this isn't the Edith Holden, anything to do with Edith Holden. It's a different thing altogether, it costs one ninety nine. But, this is by Agnes Catherine Landale. 
or Aggie, as she was known to her friends, was born in Liverpool in 1851 to a wealthy family of Scottish merchants who made their fortune in Indian jute. After living in India with her husband, she settled in Limpstead in Surrey and died in 1916, aged 63. And in the interim, this is what she did. And they're all in months, so we're in December now. Um, November. Look at them. They're, they're really, really lovely. And you wouldn't know where to start with what to use. They're gorgeous. Into October. Regina wants to know if you've ever made a man's journal. No, I haven't. I haven't, Regina. So I don't know a man that would want to keep a journal, really. I can't, for the love of me, imagine Mr F getting up in the morning and thinking, oh, yeah, I know, I'll write about whatever. Because nothing that exciting ever happens to us that he'd want to write about it. But, you know, maybe it's the way forward. Maybe it's one to sell. I don't know. If you know somebody that hunts or fishes. Or... Yeah, if you hunt or fish or whatever. Um so you see, I mean, there's just, it's a lovely book. It's a really, 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 once again, cracking book. Now then, this one, The Country Flowers of a Victorian Lady by Fanny Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I've got to laugh because it's just funny. Um, and these are slightly different in as much as they're at composition, really. But, you know, there's still nice things to fussy cut. Nice little images here. Nice, nice, nice. Look at those. I mean, actually, overall, that's lovely. And there's a perfect thing for a Christmas journal. Christmas rose, mistletoe and holly. Please let me remember I've got that when it comes to making a Christmas journal. And there's nice... The mistletoe hung in the Baron's Hall and the holly bush brightened the old oak walls. Sing hi, ho, the holly. I mean, that's nice if you just cut that out and put it on. Or here, the holly and the ivy where they are both full grown. Of all the trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown. Those sort of little things in a Christmas journal... And this beautiful text here, beautiful. Um, so, yeah, you know, plenty of things to fussy cut out. Nice images, depending on what you're looking for. And I really love this text. And he called the flowers so blue and, co and golden, stars that in earth's firmament do shine. I mean, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Uh, fussy cut, fussy cut for top for toppers for the snippets. Lovely. Oh, yeah, this is a nice book. A nice book. Pansies and forget me nots. I love forget me nots. One of my favourite flowers. And this is something very different. This is Maud, the Diaries of Maud Barclay, and it's just interesting. It's just an interesting book. It, it's the diaries of this woman, Maud, through her life, really, from when she was a sort of big teenager to um, towards her death. And there's, you know, there's lots of sketches that she's done, and a lot of them are lampooning people, uh, really. But there are some interesting ones as well, pertaining to that age of late Victoriana and uh, Edwardian times that are just would be interesting if that's the sort of journal that you're doing. I mean, these people played tennis. It's hysterical. Uh, so it's just, it's a different book, definitely. But it is interesting. And if you were doing a sort of Victoriana type, type book, perfect. I mean, look at this. Really interesting stuff in there. So I've now got these two books and they are by Dover and they've, they come with CD-ROMs back in the day when CD-ROMs were uh, all the go and it's the permission free design so you can use them on whatever you want. 
you can make them bigger smaller they come as i say with the cd rom in the back which has got all these images so you can manipulate them make them bigger or smaller and this is stained glass so um don't discount images like these because we know that we can print them out and paint them or we can print them out on tissue paper as i showed you the other day and paint on the back so there's lots of images there interesting nice images that you can color yourself uh, that you can print out as many times as you want to and you, well i think you're only allowed to use 10, 10 in any one project yeah 10 in any one project um well you know that's fine i don't think you'd want more than 10 but that's the stained glass one which i really like actually and this one here is uh, children, old fashioned children's. And this is what they're like. I mean, this definitely has a place. Um, it's almost a hundred dollars. You are joking, that is ridiculous. But these are nice. Once again, if you're doing a sort of Victorian journal, these are lovely to have in it. If you're doing a sort of baby, welcoming a baby, whatever, these are nice too. We should fill a container and send it to the States. Yeah, we should. <laughs> we should fill a container and send it to you guys. I mean, that's a lovely image, isn't it? And there's some really nice images in here, is what I'm trying to say to you. I like this image of the girl and the boy looking out the window. But they're all contained on the CD-ROM, which works with Mac and Windows. Mm. <laughs> so um, I don't know how much that was. It wasn't that expensive. I've had, had it a long time. It says two ninety nine. So yeah. But 606 permission-free designs. Well worth it. Right, now we're on to Edith. This is the Edwardian Lady Dates to Remember. And it is exactly that. It's it's a little, um, it's got birthstones there. And images on the front of all the, this is where you put down whose birthday it is. This is gift list, <laughs> a gift list. Uh, but on the, on the first of each month, there's an image and I don't know what it cost us, but for what it was, it would have been worth it just for that image. And also, I like the text that she uses. And things like that, notes, that notes page there, just chop that off and stick that in your, on the back of a tag. And you've got, you know, that's really nice. Uh, so those are the dates, as I say. Uh, gift list, but notes. Notes is good. So there we are. I mean, there's... Plenty of images as you go through it. I'm sure you're familiar with most of them because they're in the uh, books. But they're just a little bit smaller, so they might be a bit handier. Um, there's no price on that one, but it wouldn't have been expensive. Now then, this one here, I didn't know was available until Mr. Fixit came back with it. It cost 50p. It's a countryside diary and it's got this red um, binding on it and poppies on the front. I hadn't seen it before. So it's just a little bit different. And it's because it's a countryside diary, she's obviously expecting you to put stuff down like species. So, you know, bumblebee date scene, where you saw it, observations, it was buzzing around. I mean, that's as about as technical as I could get with anything like that. But at the top of each page is this lovely little picture. And so, you know, sad as it is, I would forsake the rest of the page just for this little picture. And every so often you get a full plate, which is lovely. So, you know, there's loads of... Um, loads in here for 50p fixed photographs and memorabilia here okay um, talking about fixing photographs can i just talk briefly about max bingham who has uh uploaded put a youtube link onto our junk journal uh, group facebook group 
Um, she's she's not very confident about it. She thinks that it needs a bit more decoration, etc. I'd advise you, if you possibly can, to go and have a look at that. It's the, the link by Max Bingham. It is a lovely journal. She's done really well. I like it a lot. So well done her. So here we go. And we've got this lovely in text birds here. Oh, and it's just... High. She's a bit late. You haven't missed anything that dramatic, to be honest. I've been working my socks off, like. So once again, we've got these little pictures at the top, a plate, flora and fauna. I love that text. And so it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. Regina says she'll buy it from you. <laughs> <laughs> For 50p. <laughs> uh, and this one, which says pickles, preserves and recipes. I like that. That's nice. Oh, look, looky, look. Recipe serves how many? Difficulty scale. <laughs> <laughs> difficulty yeah five everything preparation time cooking time ingredients and how much and the method i did not know i had that that that's begging to go in uh, debbie bangston are you on she's got um a new uh, a book uh a gar kitchen garden recipe book or something this is perfect for that uh, and as I say, there's the odd plate uh, around it as well. There's loads of these recipe cards. Look, what are the other ones then? What's this? Home, homegrown. Ah, oh, yeah. Name, date, planted, location, and garden. Because my garden is so big, I will forget where I've planted the carrots. And observations. Yeah, orange. <laughs> this is lovely. I didn't realise this was quite places of interest name companions and memories oh this is lovely oh yes lovely book and countryside remembered so it's a place and then your special memories so and, and as i say there's still plates and there's these lovely bits to cut in the top so there we go that is a cracking book i think you'll agree thanks uh and then there's country diary nature notes we're nearing the end, guys. So it's um, it's similar, really. It, it's kind of more like a, a diary. The text isn't in that lovely font that we have, you know, like this one that we're familiar with. It's more like just sort of typewritten, which I'm not so keen on. But it's still got the plates in it. Um, and it's still got this little bit of text at the top here with a month in it. So it's... Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, and the plates that we're familiar with from uh, her other journal. So there we are, that's the nature notes. Then we've got garden notes. Very similar to the last one. Very, very, very similar. Except I think you're supposed to keep track on what's grown in your garden. Uh, I love these goldfinches. I love that original plate in a book. Uh, poppies. Yeah, I mean, there's things. I obviously nicked a couple of butterflies off here at some stage. So, yeah, you know, more Edith that we're familiar with. Just maybe a slightly different size to the plates in the book, perhaps. And then, is this the last one? Yeah. So this is a uh, country diary of an Edwardian lady photograph album. So it's split at the top so as you can put your photograph in, in there. But I think you could probably split that page all the way. And you could put that in a in a journal if you wanted to, and the plate on the back. Look at that. Yeah, I mean this isn't this hasn't got any split in it. Photograph split. It's just a lovely. That'd make a nice book cover, wouldn't it? Nice journal cover that. Uh, and this obviously got the space for the photo. Another plate. Plate on the back couple of photographs in there and there and these images that we know so well from the original 
country diary but you know I'm sure you could hack these up and get some good stuff out of them you know even if you cut that so you still had the place to put the photograph you could put um, you know a tag in there or you could just use it as it is <laughs> yeah I could yeah. use it as a photograph album as it is if you wanted to yeah. but you know <laughs> I don't <laughs> I'd rather cut it up. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. So there we go, guys. That's my favourite plate in the whole of Edith Holden. I love those roses. Dog roses. Love them. Could you just fetch me that dog rose painting from over there? Sometimes I take it into my head to do watercolours. Um... I'm not that practised in it, to be honest, but I do love doing it. So given that dog roses, as they're called, are my favourite flower, I decided I'd paint some at one, on one occasion. So that was my painting, my watercolour of dog roses and bluebells. So it's hanging on our wall. I don't know why. I don't. Maybe it's not worthy of it, but it's hanging there anyway. Uh, and that's it. There you go. So I hope you've enjoyed this canter round um, my inspiration books. <laughs> There's loads of inspiration, isn't there? I'm just lacking the hours in the day. Uh, yesterday, I think I did six and a half hours of junk journaling straight through. Mr. Fixit was plying me with uh, coffee throughout. I'll just give you that, my love. And we'll just have a look at these uh, snippets again. So they're all stuck oh, down. Zoom in, yeah, zoom, 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 zoom. Lovely. Uh, these are all stuck down. Dyeing that lace with the with the green looks quite nice, I think. Oh, where are we? There we are. Do you down a bit? There we are. So we've got the gauze behind. We've got the lace and the posh lace there. The button, the stamps, the green silk looks nice I think and then this one is the one that's got the um, bling on it another stamp butterfly S similar similar makeup and as I say it just um, slides on and keeps things affixed or keeps nothing affixed if you just want to put it over the top of the side of your book so that's that's them useful thing to know I would say so there we are guys that is about it <laughs> uh, I hope you haven't been bored I really hope you haven't been bored and I hope that I've brought you some some enjoyment on a Tuesday afternoon Regina I hope you're feeling better soon you're on my mind and everybody else Regina says she'd do some queen stamps. Queen? Oh, queen stamps, these <laughs> stamps. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, Shaz, that's so nice of you. Shaz says she's going to send you some, Regina. That's really sweet of you. Thank you very much. Thanks once again for joining me. On Saturday, we will start the cover for our uh, junk journal that we've but it's pretty much finished. I'll have another look through it and see if there's anything like these that I can add uh, or if it needs any more tags, blah, blah, uh, stencils, that sort of thing. But failing that, I will see you on Saturday where we'll start doing the cover um, and maybe on Sunday we'll get the signatures sewn in so it will be finished this weekend. So get cracking. Keep up to date with what, what you need to be doing. Hopefully you'll have two finished signatures for Saturday. Thank you so very much. Yeah, have fun, Mr. F. Yeah, find some eye candy. He's champing at the bit to get going. He was mooching around this house yesterday. He didn't know what to do with himself because he really wanted to go out. Anyway, I'll see you on Saturday. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>